Stanford University. Thank you, Christopher. What a pleasure to be here this morning. A wonderful day to get our minds and hearts uh, wrapped around this concept of how food can become a way for us to change the world and make it a healthier place. So um, I want to share my circuitous route to, to food as a solution. Um, but I first want to ask you all a favor to close your eyes for a minute and imagine or think about a place that you spent time in as a young person where you felt really good, where you felt like you were in, um, in the element that you would like to spend more time in, where you felt relaxed, you felt at peace, you felt nourished. Maybe it was in nature, wild nature. Maybe it was in a backyard. Think about that place. All right. We all, I think, have those moments where we connected with nature or a place um, that had a profound influence on the way we felt and the way we are in the world. Okay, you can open your eyes now. Or you could stay there, and, <laughs> and I'll just stand here for nine minutes. <laughs> um, uh, so for me, um, that place wasn't where I grew up. Um, at 10676 Missouri Avenue in, in that small little town in Southern California, Los Angeles. Um, um, but instead, it was because of my uh, holistic psychologist, hippie uncle, who got his PhD at Cal in the 60s, um, in the middle there, that um, we got to venture up into the mountains of, in the wild nature of Yosemite, where it was on uh, a trail uh, to our swimming hole that we would go to on the South Fork of the Merced every year, uh, that I felt incredible. I mean, I felt like this is how people should feel on a daily basis. Um, and uh, here, here I was um, in the middle of you know, hot granite boulders and clear, crystal clear streams and I had this epiphany, a little bit older than I am in that photo. I think I was like eight or nine. Um, uh, and it was that, unlike LA, there's this vast landscape that hadn't been touched by people. Um, maybe now all landscapes have an influence of, uh, of us with climate change. Um, but for that moment in, in, in my youth, I felt, uh, wow, this is incredible. This is, this is just, no one did this. No one planted these trees. No one put these rocks here. This was just here. We were on this spinning planet. It was my, my little moment of realizing that we're just animals on a planet. Um, and uh, that had a profound impact on me um, as, a, as a kid growing up in LA. And I had a similar experience um, going to summer camp. I don't know if any of you have spent some of your summers summer camp. Um, but for me, up in the hills behind LA, my Big Bear, I got to uh, have those same experiences. And, and, and also in the context of a, a supportive community, the camp counselors, the whole YMCA program was really about building a, you know, healthy individuals and a healthy community. Um, and so I, I really thrived in that environment. I loved it. I loved uh, every minute of it, and I kept going back, and I became a camp counselor. And here I am I'm with uh, some of my campers in the cabin that uh, one year. Um, and this is where um, I, uh, I realized that I wanted to spend more of my, my adult life. I thought, I'm going to be a camp counselor. Maybe I'll be a camp director someday. Um, uh, but then when I was 19, um, and I 
quick little jump, I ended up uh, going to UC Santa Cruz, um, partly because you could hike to class. Um, and uh, I was interested in psychology. My hippie uncle had an influence on me, and I thought I'm going to study how the environment impacts our well-being. Um, and then I was, at the summer after my first year in college, I went and visited this family uh, at Live Power Community Farm in Covalo in Round Valley, the Decaters. Um, and it was there where I had that similar feeling. It was, I spent a week. Um, and I sowed pumpkin seeds with my friend Eric, who was an apprentice there that I was visiting. And it was there that not only did I have that feeling like, ah, this is great. This is how people should be in the world, feel in the world. But we all, they had this added dimension of economic life. It wasn't that you had to go to Yosemite or you had to go to summer camp to experience health and well-being outside. Um, but you could also produce something and make it available to commu your community. Um, and that, uh, as a 19-year-old, stuck with me. And I changed that my uh, path at school from psychology to community studies, an interdisciplinary approach to community-level social change, with food as the uh, kind of, uh, organizing principle for how that change could come about. Um, and CSAs in particular, uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with community supported agriculture. Well, that year that I was there was the first year that the first farm in California just, uh, started their CSA, Live Power Community Farm. And they're a group of shareholders in San Francisco that would come and get their, their share of the bounty of, of the farm each week. Uh, and that combining a conscious relationship between consumers and the farmers, uh, to me, uh, spelled more of a, not just a personal solution for health, but a social, economic, even political solution for community health. So leap forward 10 more years after spending uh, a bit of time promoting that idea of community-supported agriculture. I, I met my love of my life, and um, we wanted to start an educational farm together where we can have a CSA. We could um, bring kids to the, to the farm uh, in a similar way that I enjoyed um, as, a, as a camper and uh, manifest uh, that kind of uh, uh, work in my daily life as well. So we're. Uh, just over the hill um, as a crow flies, about 20 miles. Um, and we're on a, a pie-shaped piece of land, so our geologic fate, hence the name Pie Ranch. That upper slice was where we started in the triangle. Um, and we've since in expanded to include the lower uh, portion there, the heart of our educational programming. So we grow ingredients for pie, like pumpkins, and wheat. And we, as Christopher mentioned, we have hens and now a rooster, um, and eggs and dairy for pumpkin pie filling. Um, and we've created a system of, of production that we think um, brings, restores health to the soil and, and to the land, the watershed around us. You could just look at that. Uh, rich, dark uh, clay loam soil that is just perfect for growing healthy crops. And we work with high school students from San Francisco, from Pacifica, and locally from Pescadero. We have just a little bit of water. <laughs> um, and um, uh, students engage in hands-on activities on the farm. and. Uh, including uh, understanding where milk comes from. And we also work with, uh, it's okay, I'll survive. I only have 15 seconds left. <laughs> um, work with uh, young emerging farmers. And one of them will be here um, later today on a panel, Vince Trotter and Vince and Jenny, 
Um, they learn about, uh, about farming from all aspects of production through consumption. And then we also use the barn, uh, our roadside barn that's our farm stand, uh, we use for meetings and we're engaged in regional organizing to help make it easier for new farmers to find access to land. Uh, thank you. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, access to land and better support to uh, be become uh, a farmer. And then we uh, use our barn as well for um, celebrating all of those activities um, in the form of a barn dance. Has any of you been to one of our Pie Ranch barn dances? Every third Saturday of the month, we get a good show of Stanford students um, usually. So um, please feel free to, to come visit us. Um, I just want to end by uh, saying that um, you all really, are, are all of you, or most of you, um, a part of Stanford in some way? Students, faculty, many of you are. Well, you're all really farmers, because right isn't Stanford a farm? So you may be cultivating words um, or ideas, but um, you really are farmers of right. So thank you very much. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.